adventure. A kingdom for a stage, princes to act, and monarchs to behold the swelling scene. Then should the warlike Harry, like himself, assume the court of Mars, and at his heels, leashed in like hounds, should famine, sword, and fire crouch for employment. But pardon, gentles, all the flat, unraised spirits that had dared on this unworthy scaffold to bring forth so great an auction. Can this cockpit hold the vasty fields of France? <laughs> or may we cram within this east side bar the very casks that did affright the air at Azure Court? Oh, <laughs> hark! Since a crooked figure may attest a little place a million, let us ciphers to this great account on your imaginary forces work. Suppose within the girdle of these walls are now confined two mighty monarchies whose high upreared and abutting fronts the perilous narrow ocean parts of sunder. Piece out our imperfections with your thoughts. Into a thousand parts divide one man. Think when we talk of horses that you see them printing their proud hooves in the receiving earth. But tis your thoughts that now must deck our kings, carry them here and there, jumping o'er time, turning the accomplishments of many years into an hourglass. For the which supply, admit me, chorus to this history, who humble life, your humble patience pray, gently to hear, kindly to judge <laughs> our play. Now, suppose that you have seen the well-appointed king at Hampton Pier Embark his royalty, his brave fleet, with silken streamers, the young Phoebus and play with your fans, and in them, behold, upon him a tackle, ship boys, climbing. Here, the shrill whistle which the order gives the sounds in view. Behold, the grand sails born of the invisible and free print draw the huge bottles across the furrowed sea, breasting the lofty surf. Oh, do but think you stand upon the ridge, and behold, a city! On the inconstant billows dancing, for so appears this fleet majestical holding due course to heart. Follow. Follow and leave behind your England as dead midnight still guarded with grandsires, babies, and old women. For who is he whose chin is but enriched with one appearing hair and will not follow these cold and choice drawn cavaliers to France? Work. Work your thoughts, and therein see a siege. Behold the ordnance in their carriages, with fatal mouths gaping at girded hard for The nimble gunner with lint sucking out the devilish cannon touches, and <laughs> down goes all before them. Still be kind, and eke out our 